It's a great pleasure to be, uh, pleasure to be here today to speak about the Guyana-Brazil transport link and deepwater port market study. Um, this is the second engagement. Some of you have already um, been in one engagement in July of this year. And I would like to take the opportunity to thank all of you who are, to have taken time out of your busy days to attend this session this morning. I would also like to acknowledge the presence of the Brazilian delegation uh, who has traveled to Georgetown to participate in this workshop. So the IDB, as you have sort of, I'm sure, understood up to now, is supporting the government of Guyana in analyzing, appraising, and planning whether and how to proceed with the possibility of a transformative project that would link northern Brazil to a deep water port on the Guyanese coastline. This initiative is part of a larger IDB strategic effort to promote regional economic integration, which is one of the five priorities areas of the bank. The knowledge and dialogue that we have with our member countries in the region position us in a natural entity as a natural entity to promote integration. In 2015, 30% of our portfolio across all sectors were related to, uh, uh, to regional integration. By portfolio, I mean uh, approved operations. Integration is considered for the bank and by many as an engine, as an engine for, for growth and development. It is a strategic platform and not, and not an end in itself and allows countries to overcome the disadvantage of small market size in a world where economies of scales are critical. I've just been told to slow down, that's all. <laughs> uh, I have tried. Uh, I'm told this every time by the translators. Attract foreign invest direct investment, access the global marketplace at a faster pace. The study is financed through a non-reimbursable technical cooperation of $1.5 million. Uh, there's a fourth part, there are four steps uh, to be able to finalize the entire process. This first one that, that brings us together today, which is the market prefeasibility. And then you have the environmental and social prefeasibility, which is ongoing in terms of, term, terms of reference. And we're hoping to be able to launch in the next, uh, by the end of the year, if I'm correct. Uh, I'm told I'm correct. Uh, financial and economic um, prefeasibility at the last, and I'm forgetting the engineering and technical prefeasibility. So there, there are a few things that need to be done. Uh, this is not the first study. Many of you have uh, uh, brought up the, uh, to my attention a few months ago that there were many other studies. But this is the first really that takes into consideration that we have a market study and we include a port. The other ones were usually most probably more, more um, focused on environment, on the biodiversity, on the engineering. So this is the first what really integrates all the parts. Um, so this is what we're going to be discussing. The objective of the day today, as said, is to really to look at the, the, the flow uh, of, of the, the trade and how that flow can be able, will it can, can increase, and should it, and yes, and should maybe. Uh, the purpose of this, so it's a very ordered and logical set of studies, and the, because the first question is to ask, is this project viable? Then systematically to move to following, the following questions, which are, is this, which are, what are the best designs, the mode, route, that will balance financial, environmental, and social factors? What would be the necessary fi uh, financing? Is it affordable? How best to finance? These are all questions that need to be looked at in the future. So Guyana has a high maritime transport cost due to its small size. This is all things we know. Uh, shallow river ports that do not permit the per allow the use of larger ships with deeper drafts. It is also has a small population, not, nothing that is new. But at this present time, in order to justify a deep water port, the project would have to rely on the transshipment of goods to and from northern Brazil states. In order to attract this transshipment cargo, a route through Guyana to the Atlantic port would have to represent, represent cost and time advantages compared to the existing routes. 
the market study and that analyzes possible transport corridors, reviews what trade facilitation measures would have to occur to have port efficiency, custom handlings and border crossings in Guyana, how long would these reforms likely take? And then generate a traffic forecast of cargo under three scenarios with different growth assumptions. In addition to the transshipment potential, internal cargo, cargo loads would be expected to increase as well. As Guyana grows, it would export and import more goods. It would be handled and would be handled through the deep, uh, deep water port due to increased efficiencies and lower costs. Moreover, the transport link crossing uh, the intraland would open new territory to economic development and generate more commerce. So today we are here to listen to the findings of the consultants on potential deep water port traffic and cost comparison of moving cargo on different routes. The aim is to determine whether this amount of traffic would justify advancing to look at the feasibility of designing, routing, and building a deep water port and a transport link to the Brazilian border. I hope that all the participants have fruitful exchanges, absorb new information, give productive feedback, so as to finalize the report and continue forward, supporting and promoting open and transparent evidence-based decision-making. Thank you very much. To say a warm welcome to our, the delegation from Brazil, from Roraima, who I understand um, traveled by road just to emphasize the feasibility of this project. <laughs> it is indeed my pleasure to be here this morning to participate in this second conference surrounding the presentation of the final results of the market study for the Guyana, Brazil, Land Transportation Link and Deepwater Harbor. I am eager to see what comes from today's conference, particularly during the discussion stages. The IDB has also done a commendable job in highlighting the merits of such a project. And as the Minister responsible for infrastructure in Guyana, I am particularly pleased with the growth potential this project presents, not only financially, but in regards to infrastructure. Last year, Guyana economic growth was relatively moderate. With a large portion of our GDP being generated from the agriculture and natural resources sector, when it comes to our main exports, we see sugar, rice, bauxite, and wood trumping. Many of these exports make their way primarily to Europe, but also to the Caribbean, Central America, and North America. In regards to Guyana imports, these mainly originate from the Caribbean, Asia, and North America. I would have just listed the regions that Guyana exports to and imports from. But for some reason or the other, Brazil is not a major player in our country's imports and exports. Guyana shares a border with Brazil, specifically with the landlocked Brazilian state Roraima, Roraima neighboring states, Amazonas, is also landlocked. However, despite their proximity, Guyana and Brazil have not fully capitalized on their economic relationship. On the Brazilian side, the Amazon River to the Atlantic coast is the main route for imports and exports to Roraima. However, this route is not only time consuming but relatively expensive. This is where an alternative transportation link via Guyana comes in. The traffic potential for cargo is considered to be significant, which is the reason for this market study, market survey. 
And if correct, the existing port of Georgetown cannot co accommodate this potential. The development of a suitable deep water port in Guyana is therefore the way to go. While the corridor linking the Guyanese Brazilian border will prove to be a major competitive alternative for routing cargo to and from Brazil. What does this mean to Guyana? Guyana can increase the competitiveness of its exports thanks to lower maritime transportation costs. Guyana can also benefit from stimulated economic activity along the road, leading to regional economic benefits in terms of employment and GDP. When we also take into account the need for tolling, this may add another dimension of economic returns for Guyana. Additionally, we also take into account the likely development of the offshore oil industry here in Guyana. This further fosters the potential of higher economic growth, and it becomes even more important that we have a deep water port that can facilitate trade in this regard. Of course, such an undertaking would, not, can, would and cannot occur overnight. There is room for major improvements. For one, Guyana must improve its logistics performance to ease the burdensome process of documentary compliance and move this process from being so time consuming. There's also room for major improvement in administrative handling and the exchange of documents needed for international trade. There's also need for improvement in the official communication system between the two countries, customs, and agreements governing the operation of trucks within the countries and on the undertaking of cargo facilitation measures, as well as a need for major infrastructural upgrades. These areas will all be highlighted in the market study, and they have all been noted by me on behalf of the government of Guyana. These are vital concerns for the success of this project, and I'm sure you will hear more recommendations from the consultancy firm that undertook the responsibility of drafting this market study. If these shortcomings can be rectified and the improvements realized, we would indeed see great things for both Guyana and Brazil. Before I take my leave, I would like to encourage today's participants to actively participate in the discussions. As I have outlined, this project holds significant potential for development and the input by the stakeholders is necessary. I thank you.